Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Summer 69-72 Carryover League. Tonight, we're in the America League Midwest. Another great up to seven series to distinguish first and second place in this division. Uh, it's the Royals and Twins. And, you know, going back to the beginning of the year, these are the two teams we thought would be here. Uh, a young 69 expansion Royals team that made all the right moves in 70, 71, and 72 of a nice nucleus together, capable of winning the division, even without George Brett on the scene yet. He doesn't come on the scene for another couple years. But they're already ready with some nice talent. And the Minnesota Twins, really good team in the late 60s, led by, you know, Oliva and Killebrew and so forth. The winners of the America League West in the years 69 and 70, only to lose to the eight Orioles in the League Championship Series and eventually to the Oakland A's in their own division. So we knew these two teams would be good. Let's see what's happened. So in game one in Minnesota, Twins, seven, Royals, two. It's Burt Blylevin, the all-star, beating Mike Heedland, seven to two. Then in game two, it is the Twins again, 4-2 to two this time. Jim Cott, nifty win, beating Roger Nelson. So does that put pressure on the Royals? How do they perform? Well, actually, they perform like the Royals. They come, out, they come back home in Game 3, 12-0 pounding of the Twins. So there's no, you know, there's no role in the, the Royals over here. 12-0 pounding. Wally Bunker, three-hit shutout in which he gave up two hits in the first inning and one hit in the ninth inning. Retired 25 batters in a row in between. 12-0 drubbing. So what happens in game four? Well, we think this is going to be special, folks. Royals win another thriller, 6-5 to to even the series. So the magic of this Royals-Twins rivalry is being born right in front of our eyes. A 6-5 game for the Royals. But then, in Game 5, we have a rematch of Game 1 pitching matchup, Burt Blylevin and Mike Heedland. And once again, but this time in Kansas City, it's Burt Blylevin, a 4-0 complete game shutout. Burt Blylevin was an all-star, and now he's throwing his hat in for the Cy Young Award. And the Twins get a road win in the series, and they're up three games to two. So how does that factor in to the up to seven format in the first round of the postseason? Well, here is what the Twins and Royals had going on. Um, the Twins were a game behind to start these uh, seven games. Turns out it is a best of seven. It's a pure best of seven to determine first place. Even though if the Twins win the series by a game, they would be tied the Twins would have the tiebreaker. So right now, they're up by that one game. They're, they've come home. They need to win either game six or game seven to be in first place. And when you look at the overall standings in this division, my goodness, this, the, all this, this is a very competitive division. They're winning. Um, and they, they would face the American League East in the next round of the postseason. Even the White Sox have a chance a game under 500 with Wilbur Wood. So, and the Brewers just a game back. So this is a very competitive division. Uh, the Twins, if they, like I said, if they win one of the next two games at home, they would be in first place. But that doesn't mean they've clinched yet. You know, we don't clinch these titles and and uh, seeds until all three rounds of the postseason tournament are over. So today, tonight, it is Game Six at Metropolitan Stadium in Minnesota. And we have, for Kansas City, Wally Bunker, who threw that three-hit shutout against number three starter, Joel Horland. The three and four starters for the Twins have struggled this year. It's been Burp Lalevin and Jim Cott that have led the Twins. But Horland, will pitch game six. If he falters, they have Jim Cott in game seven against Roger Nelson and the Twins. Let's get started. Pat Kelly leads it off. 2-5 with a base hit. Double-A Steeler. There's been a lot of running in this series because neither team has a good throwing catcher, starting catcher. Kelly's going to attempt a stolen base, and he's safe. 
Amos Otis, 65, this guy's the center. Paul Shaw, 512, second X. This is Rod Crew, he's a 3E37 at home. Makes the play. Runner at third, two outs for John Mayberry. One four just misses his column and skies the right. Bottom of one, Cesar Tovar. 64, off the bunker card. Homer, one to 14, double is a double. Rod Carew, 612, first. Runner goes to third with one out for Tony Oliva. 64, that's an automatic two run homer. And the Twins have already scored more in the first inning than they did last start versus Wally Bunker. 2 nothing Twins. Harmon Killebrew, 68K. And with two outs, Hal King, 48, pops a short. Bob Oliver, 1-7. Single one of three, line out. Lou Pinella, 65, center. Ed Kirkpatrick, 2-9. Let's take a look at Ed Kirkpatrick's car. Mr. Versatility. Nizak have been catching most of this year. He can play everywhere but shortstop. 2-9, that is gone. It's 2-1. Fred Patek, 37, is a single. He's going to steal. And he steals second base. Reinhardt, second. For Rich Severson, 39, skies the right field. All right, it is 2-1. Bottom of the second inning. Joe Haig. 32, third. Cleo James, 2-8, single. Beast Stealer, Ed Croft is going to hit and run. Base hit on the five, hit and run. Runners on the corners for Chico Cardenas. They're going to bring it up. 2-9, let's take a look at Chico. The 2-E 17 inch short. He can hit a little bit. Uh, 11 home runs, not nice for a shortstop. Power both ways. 2-9, base hit in the right field. That scores Cleo James. And Ed Crosby will hold at second. First and second, one out in a 3-1 game. Cesar Tovar, 66. Double 108 is a double. That'll score Crosby. Second and third, one out. They gotta bring it up for Carew. It's starting to get out of control here. 3-6, let's take a look at the All-Star. Rod Carew was hitting 4-11 at the All-Star break. MVP of the All-Star game, the three-run homer. And things are coming up Rod Carew this year, folks. I guess he's got he's got to throw his hat into the MVP race as well. Here, 3-6 is single dot dot. And that's a key hit here to extend the Twins to a 6-1 to one lead. And seven hits already off Wally Bunker. Tony Oliva, 37. Single, 118. Let's take a look at Tony Oliva's card. This is an amazing card. So he hit... 337 with this card, but against righties, he's sitting probably 360. I mean, uh, when you get the 37 single 118, that's pretty darn good. So that's a single dot. That puts first and second with one out. For Harmon Killebrew, 45, uh, sky's the center. And with two outs, Hal King, 312, bounces a short. So, Bunker recovers at the end to keep the, the Royals still in the game, 6-1. And the Twins have an outstanding bullpen, so don't expect them to give Joe Horland or uh, Earl Wilson, you know, a long appearance. They might just pull these guys out early. Pat Kelly, 1-3, bounces back to the mound. Amos Otis, 46, bounces a second. Carew's a 3-E37. He makes the play. Paul Shaw, 38, center. Bottom of the third, Joe Haig, 59, second. Cleo James, 62, first. And Ed Crosby, 48, pops a short. We go to the fourth. John Mayberry, 46, is a walk. Bob Oliver, 69, center. Lou Pinella, 1-7, double one of four, single dot dot, runs on the corners for Ed Kirkpatrick, 59. Now, here is Horland's getting into trouble here. Triple one of five, single dot dot, is a two-run triple. And here come the Royals, 6-2, six 6-3, to six to with a runner on third with one out. They got to bring it up for the A-bunning Freddie Potek. 68, clean single to right field. And the you know, Twins fans are getting nervous because they want to get into this bullpen. They don't want to blow this huge lead and huge opportunity here. Pottek is a is a double A stealer. 
Hal King, plus he's going to steal down two runs just because it's just a great opportunity. A great opportunity to steal, but he gets thrown out on a 20. Wow, that's a tough break for the Royals. Patek, that was one of 17 chance he missed. That's a tough break. Trying to get in a scoring position. Didn't work out. So with two outs, it's Rich Severson. 6-12, bounces back to the mound. 6-4 game. Bottom of the fourth. Chico Cardenas, 46, pops it short. Cesar Tovar, 1-2, lines a third. Carew, 67, another hit. Double one to seven is a double. He's two for three. We'll see what his batting average is at the in the composite box. Check all the stats of uh, the three All-Stars the Twins have. And the two All-Stars the Royals had, John Mayberry and Mo Drabowski. Tony Leva, 69 off bunker, single one, lines are short. And that's your inning. All right, fifth inning, top of the fifth, Joe Horland. Three outs to qualify for a win. But again, Paranowski, Williams, and Reichert, they can all pitch a couple innings in this game if it means clinching the division or being in first place. Pat Kelly, 48 is a walk. He is also a double A stealer. They're gonna try it again. This time he steals successfully. And we the T rating of King is 10 and an 11 is rolled to a hold at second. For Amos Otis, 411, left X. This is Cleo James is a 3 E8 on left field. He makes the grab. Paul Shaw, 1-7 is a walk. And John Mayberry, 59, and there it, there it goes. Triple one to five, single dot dot, Horland. About to lose this thing. It's six to five now. With runners on the corners, they're gonna bring the infield up for Bob Oliver. 5-11 is a K. And with two outs, it's Lou Pinella. 44, center X. This is Tovar in center. He's a two and he makes the grab. It is six to five. And uh, five innings in the book for Horland. They may not let him pitch the sixth. Bunker has settled down in the last two innings. Bottom of the fifth, Harmon Killebrew, 35's a walk. Hal King, 1-9. Let's take a look at Hal King's card. He was acquired in the offseason with Burke Blylevin in exchange for Jim Perry and Rich Reese. Hal King, 1-9, is a single dot dot. Runners in the corners for Joe Haig. Now, the one problem the Royals have is a very so-so bullpen. We like their starters, we do like their young hitters and their closer, but Butler, Pena, and McCool aren't the best. So, Bunker is a starter seven. We might just have to ride him out and hope for the best here. Runners are on the corners for Joe Haig and they are going to play it back here instead of bringing it up. 4-11, first X. They want to double play if they can get it. Mayberry's a 3-8 e at first base, and they get the double play. So they give up the run, but they get the 3-6-3 double play to help attempt to get out of the inning. And with two outs, Cleo James. 1-11, skies are right. All right, Horland. This would be a tremendous opportunity. They're going to pull him. The Minnesota Twins are probably the deepest bullpen in baseball. Paranowski, Williams, and Reichert. All relief threes. And we have 12 outs to get, and they're gonna exercise it now. They're not gonna wait for a game seven. It's time to, it's time to get a, uh, a game lead in this division by winning this series four to two. That's the twin mindset. So in the six, Paranowski, and this also gets Ed Kirkpatrick out of the game, the catcher. Because he cannot hit lefties. So batting for Kirkpatrick will be backup catcher Mike Ryan. The pitch to Ryan. 3-6 is a sky to left. Patek. 57 Patek is a K. And with two outs, it's Severson. 2-8 is a grounder to short. All right, bottom of the sixth. Ed Crosby, 2-4, pops the first. Chico Cardenas, 57 is a K. And Cesar Tovar, 49, skies the center field. Through six innings, Twins with a 7-5 lead. Let's pause a moment for station identification.
This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, top of seven. Paranowski to Pat Kelly. 45 is a base hit. Do you steal down two? I think you do. Another 20 is rolled. Wow. That questionable move, but my double A stealers plus two arm catchers. I, I like to do this, try and steal a steal a run, steal a base, and a backfired twice in this game for the Royals. Amos Otis. One four flies the left, and with two outs, Paul Shaw, 65 skies the center field. Stretch time here in Minnesota. We've been enjoying the. Afro Funk Explosion of the Lafayette Afro Rock Band, 1973. Plenty of samples off your, off this record or on your favorite records. All right, bottom of seven, Bunker. I know he's given up seven runs, but I mentioned his bullpen. Carew actually it's lefties better than righties. I'll leave it hit. Yeah, the only time you'd want to bring a lefty in would be to get the Hal King out of there. So let's let Bunker go pitch the top three hitters, Crew, Oliver, and Killebrew. See what happens. Rod Carew, 3-6, another hit. It's third hit of the game. Not much you can do there. Tony Oliva, 1-8 Oliva, double 1-0-18 is a double. The Twins are feeling it. Look, Carew hit 366 and Oliva at 337. I mean... You got to give the Twins some props. I mean, they are probably the favorite to win this division anyway. And now you got Killebrew. Lefty, righty, doesn't matter. Let's take a look at Killebrew's card. Bringing in a lefty here is not going to help matters much. <laughs> Second and third. You got to bring it up, though, since time is short in this game. 2-6. And look what I just rolled. The ground ball plus because I brought the infield up. This is a perfect storm for the Twins. They've gotten all the breaks. That's a two-run single and two guys throwing out stealing. Translates to a four-run lead in this game. And Wally Bunker is now broken. After six innings and three batters, the Royals are going to need a miraculous comeback against the best bullpen in baseball or, or this series will be over. They're going to go Bill Butler. Do the Royals. It's actually a starter relief. He'll probably be in the rotation next year. The Royals have an abundance of starters, not that many relievers. So he comes on in the seventh to face lefty Hal King, who leaves the game. And batting for Hal King will be their other catcher, George Mitterwald, with the runner at first. Pitch to George, 54, skies the center. Joe Haig, normally he comes out of the game against lefties, but... He's a good defensive first baseman, so he'll hit. They want to leave the defense in for the final six outs. Haig, 59, is short X. This is Patek, a 2E27. It's a ground ball C. We've got a runner in scoring position, two outs for Cleo James. We're going to walk Cleo James to pitch to the lefty Ed Crosby. Ed Crosby, 1 6, pops to first. All right, eighth inning of a 9 5 game. I think we're just going to bring Stan Williams in. Big four run lead like this. Stan Williams in the eighth. Let's take a look at Stan. Pete Reichert available for the ninth. All the defense they have is in the game. They need six outs. John Mayberry leading off the eighth for the Royals. 38. Bounce to second. Bob Oliver, 66. Flies to right. And with two outs, it's Lou Pinella. 34. Pops to short. Bottom of the eighth inning. Chico Cardenas, 67, is a walk. Tovar, 412, pitcher B. He is on. He's going to attempt to steal. He's a double A stealer. And I think he got nipped there. Minus one arm catcher. Yeah, I got him. So it must be a muddy track there as guys are getting thrown out stealing left and right today. All right, Rod Carew looking for his fourth hit of the game with two outs in the eighth inning. 57 is a K. We go to the ninth. Stan Williams. It'll be Mike Ryan, and then probably Pete Reichert will pitch to the next two guys. Mike Ryan. 1-3. Sky's the right field. 
All right, Stan Williams will leave with a four-run lead, inning and two-third, inning one and one-third, and it's Pete Reichert. Also, he he was a, he was part of that Portland trade. It was uh, Blylevin and. Hal King and Reichert going to Minnesota, and Minnesota sent draft picks, Jim Perry and Rich Reese to Portland. Worked out well for Portland as well, as they're doing well this year. Anyway, Pete Reichert in the ninth inning will face Fred Patek. The pitch to Freddie, two tens, a bouncer to short. And with two outs, it's Rich Severson, 4-4, four, four, bouncer to third, Crosby's a 3 E13, a third base. Can't make a play, it's a single. Couldn't squeeze it. Game keeps going on. All right, two outs in the ninth. Pat Kelly, 55, single one to three, line out to short. And he rolls a four, misses the single one to three to line out. It's been that way for Kansas City in the last couple games. And the Twins come back and win games five and six, and the series is over in six games. And the Twins are doing what we thought they would do. They uh, won the American League West in 69 and 70, and without Oakland being in their division anymore, it's it should be easier to do it. Um, a hit for Reichert. Stan Williams got everybody out. And Paranowski gave up a hit and a K, and that was the story of the game. You had a struggling number three starter, Joel Horland, but you've got a great bullpen to bail him out. That's the twin uh, formula this year. Horland gets the win, gives up seven hits and five runs. They were all earned. Walk three, struck out one. Bill Butler came on in, did an okay job, gave up two walks and a K. Wally Bunger just did not have his stuff today like he did in the first in the first meeting. He is char he's responsible for all nine of those runs, fortunately for Wally. Rode him too hard out on necessity. 1-0-0-9-0-1-0-8-9-13-5-9. And actually, the Twins finally have a one-game lead in the division after the first round of the postseason. Doesn't necessarily clinch it though. We still have two rounds of this tournament to go. But that's where we stop. The reason we stop is that there's not much point about game seven. If the Twins were to win this series five games to two, that would put the Royals two games back. So we don't need to do that. All we were trying to do is distinguish first from second, and the Twins had all the tiebreakers. So the Twins are 19 and 14, hitting 268 with a 374 ERA. We mentioned Bly Levin, he's 8 and 1 with a buck 96 ERA. Clearly in the uh, hot spot for the Cy Young voting. Mr. Carew is 59 for 143. That's 413. So he's in the MVP voting. We have Killebrew with 13 home runs. So the, all the twin guys are doing what they need to do. The Royals, and they're having a nice year too. They finally starting to look mortal here. 19 and 16, only a game behind. They're hitting 244 this year, which is a little disappointing with a 374 ERA. And, um, Wally Bunker's 5-2. and two. It was only his second loss. He'd been pitching lights out until that performance you just witnessed. Modrowski has 10 saves. And when we look at the standings now, what a crazy division this is. So with the Royals at 19-16, and 16, the first question you ask is, does that change the calculation in the series between the Brewers and White Sox of how many games they need to win to avoid... Uh, or the, the question is, can the Royals be balanced all the way into fourth place and eliminated? And the only way that happens is if both the Brewers and White Sox have records that are at least, at least three games over 500. And the quick way of doing that is simply adding up what it is currently, and you see it's just plus two and minus one is plus one. So the best thing that can happen here is 
a plus one for one of the two teams, meaning that the Royals have nothing to worry about. The worst they can do is finish in third place, but they'll probably remain in second place. If the Brewers roll the White Sox, they would could leapfrog the Royals in a second place. That's it today from the American League Midwest. Very competitive division. Hope you're enjoying the Carryover League postseason. We'll see you next time.